In yesterday's video, we finally completed our spacewalk and wound up inside the weapons lab. After recovering three unique weapons from the lab, we found that our only path forward was to continue on to the experimentation lab. On the other side of the door, we open a large round door to find a room with alien workers running around. After looting some food on a table, we walk north into... What is this? A surgery room? We see a long table in the middle of the room covered in human clothing and human remains. I got caught up in the spectacle before me, which gave the aliens plenty of time to surprise attack. The alien who attacked came out of a northern door. Inside this room, we see, what is that? Some sort of surgical chair. On the ground near to a console is one container, and then getting close, we see the body of a wastelander on the ground. But wait a minute, we recognize these chairs? One of these must be the very chair we sat in upon being abducted from Earth. The tentacle-like arms snaking out of it are each equipped with the very same tools used to probe us. But it looks like they also perform surgery here. Turning around, we see a control against the wall. Activating this gives us captive recorded log number 20. Man, what did you... Why, why can't I feel my arms? Wait, are, th are those... Are those my arms? What did you do? Oh God, put them back! P -p put them back on! They dismembered people here while they were still alive. After getting over our initial disgust, we can loot another container by one of these chairs and exit through a southern door. Turning to the west, we can exit through a western door down a long hallway. The door to the right leads to another experimentation room. This is strange. We see unique chairs covered in diodes cathodes? And then in racks next to them, vials of human blood. They use these chairs to suck blood out of their captives. But for what purpose? After looting some alien biogel on a nearby shelf, we can exit and then go through an eastern door. Here we just see a table decorated in all sorts of alien doodads, crystals, epoxy, and human gore. Golly, they were not shy about messing with human remains. They also don't seem to be taking much precaution about disease, viruses, bacteria. We haven't seen any of these guns in a hazmat suit yet. Heading out and moving south, we can turn left to activate a wall-mounted terminal, which we can use to activate its corresponding door. Oh, wow. And this scene tells a story, doesn't it? This wastelander managed to free himself and raced towards this healing archway to heal himself, but didn't make it in time. I think we get a clear idea what he died from. After looting some alien biogel on a table, we see more huge vials of human blood. And in the middle of the room is a table with a giant buzz saw. Oh, man. This is a bit overkill, though, don't you think? I mean, it would be great for just hacking off parts of a person. Jeepers. Well, directly behind this table is another shelf filled with Earth gear. We get alien biogel, but then a recon armor helmet and a suit of recon armor. When done looting, we can head out, back down the hallway, and then through the western door. This leads us to a very large room with windows against the southern wall. Peering through, we see lots of alien workers and what appears to be a humanoid figure behind a force field wall, essentially in a cell. Is this where they're keeping more prisoners? After looting a chest on the ground here, we can circle this room's perimeter. We find more alien epoxy on a table filled with human guts to the northeast. And next to this is another control, which gives us captive recorded log number 10. I can't feel my legs. What did you do to my legs? Frank? I can't see you! <laughs> Frank! Frank, what, what did they do to you? <laughs> so they weren't just harvesting our blood, body parts, and other fluids. They were turning some of us into... What? Monsters? 
after punching a button in the middle of this room, we get a very familiar sight. I bet we can gain access to the rest of this level by killing the power generating these force field doors. So just like before, we go around in a circle and tag each of the core coolant switches. When done, we stand back and wait. As soon as the generator explodes, the force field doors in the cell room vanish, releasing their occupants. It's hard to see exactly what happens, but if we toggle the free cam, we see that the occupants chase the alien workers west down a hallway and exit to the biological research lab. But peering through this window, we still see some of these creatures, whatever they are. I wanted to get a closer look. Heading through the western door, we round a corner to find a chest lying by some machinery, and then head down a hallway next to this to find a T-junction. To the right is the door that the creatures ran through to raid the biological research lab. On the ground, we see blood spatter and human gore. And to the east, we see a doorway into that cell room. I don't know if these guys are friendly or not. After all, they were captives just like me. They clearly hate their alien captors. Maybe they'll be friendly. After all, I'd hate to kill something that could be a potential ally. So sneaking in, we see them milling about down the hall, ducking into one of these cells real quick. I'm not quite sure if they're friendly. Doggone it. I'm just gonna walk right up and shake hands. <laughs> Not friendly, no, not friendly. Oh my god. These abominations appear to be half alien, half man. And disturbingly, on their inventories, we find very human gear, like a pack of cigarettes. But on others, we find very alien gear. Could these abominations be alien-human hybrids? But then we remember listening to Alien Captive Recorded Log number 19 that we got in the Waste Disposal. In that recording, the man told us that the aliens meant to change us into abominations. He told us exactly what we find here, that they've been keeping us in cells and then moving us one by one to their experimentation labs. Their labs like this one. Perhaps they were using humanity as a basic flesh stock that they would then inject with their superior alien genetic material, or somehow modify our DNA to more closely match theirs to produce a breed of hybrid alien-human monsters that they could control in battle. But it looks like they haven't gotten to the control part yet. On the oval-shaped cutting floor, we see more of these abominations dismembered on tables. The aliens clearly don't regard them any higher than they do us. And after looting some alien biogel and two containers, we can activate a control, which gives us captive recorded log number nine. Look, what are you doing to me? What's that thing? Get it out of me! It hurts! No, please! Stop! <laughs> no! <laughs> Goodness! Well, if this recording is to be believed, perhaps the transition is more instantaneous. Maybe they inject humans with some serum they've been creating over hundreds of years that causes us to instantly mutate into this strange alien-human hybrid. Examining each of these cells reveals nothing. So to continue forward, we go down the western hallway and through the very door that these abominations race through to enter the biological research lab. Immediately upon entry, we see a wall-mounted terminal that we can activate to access this room. Here we find some alien epoxy on a shelf, and that's about it. Continuing down the hallway, we open a door at the end to enter a large room filled with steam. We see a catwalk with stairs just before us, but before going up there, we're gonna go ahead and sneak behind it to take control of this nearby support drone. Since none of our other companions could come with us, it'll be handy to have this guy. Heading up the stairs to this catwalk level, we can try to sneak by. We see aliens, but they're already dead. And of course, that's right. The abominations raced through here and likely killed them. In fact, we see one to the northwest.
He made quick work of my support drone. With the abomination dead, we can loot this room. We see alien epoxy and biogel with crystals on a shelf to the north. And then on the lower oval in the middle of this floor, we find a control that gives us captive recorded log number 18. Just wait until I tell Marsha and Karen about this. Imagine, I'm actually on a spaceship. Oh, they're pointing at, oh. Oh, talking to this? What is this? Is this the space phone? Hey, Marsh, this is Janet. You will never guess where I am. Never. Oh! I wish I could hear you, but I'll just tell you. I'm in space! I was driving along the highway when there was this light, and suddenly I'm on this real spaceship. No joke! Now these little green men are making all these noises and pointing at stuff trying to talk to me. I bet I'm the first one they've met. So I figure I'll talk with them a while, then I'll join you later. And I can tell you all about it over lunch. Oh, I only had my camera. Well, they're pointing at some table with all sorts of gizmos sticking out of it. Gotta go. Kisses. <laughs> All of those ending kisses slay me. The Fallout 3 official strategy guide says that we find Janet's car, the one she was driving, when she was abducted when going through the maintenance level. Hers was that beautiful new blue Corvega Atomic V8 that we saw when the window slid open. Even though Janet is likely long dead, aliens have been keeping her car in pristine condition. After using a healing archway, we can move west where we find another abomination. Heading down the stairs to loot his corpse, we find a pre-war Earth book on his inventory. I think there's no doubt about it. These were once human. Back up the stairs, we see that this level had a bunch of pods, and peering through the porthole, we see more abominations in here. Perhaps this is where they freeze abominations, or store them until they're ready to experiment upon them. Or maybe this is part of the cooking process. Maybe the abominations need to absorb some chemical through their skin before fully turning. To continue forward, we head south and pass through a large door to some sort of conference room. We see alien workers trying to get out a western door, but they're too afraid to tag this control on the wall. I'll just go ahead and keep them there. Moving west, we see another catwalk snaking through a large room. Heading across, we can go down some stairs to this lower level. This lower level's a dead end, but we do find some decent loot here. Alien biogel crystals and epoxy on a shelf to the west. We can pick up another drone here as a temporary companion, and then loot more epoxy and alien power cells, not modules, on the shelf to the east, along with some more crystals. Directly below this is another container filled with alien goods, and when done, we can go back up the stairs to the catwalk. Following it all, all the way to the west, we find a bank of three teleporter pads. Only one is working, however. This is the teleportion matrix to the Death Ray Hub. That is where we need to go, but I want to know what the switch does. Oh, Sally! You're really good at this. I hope it wasn't too scary. Well, we're here. Now what? Well... It looks like they're still keeping some of these turned off. But there's one that's on. So I guess that's the way we go. You should probably go through first, in case there's something bad on the other side. And then I can go through after, okay? We can turn around and talk to Soma. Well, hey there. Fancy meeting you here. Nice work. Now what? Oh, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants here. Ha ha, very funny. If you've got nothing, then ask the kid. She's been helpful so far. We need to make them pay. Every last one. You know the odds of getting out of this alive are pretty small, right? I'm just saying. Thanks for your vote of confidence, Takorian. Well, she's right, we can't activate this third teleporter here. But after pushing the button, we can go through the teleporter to the observation level. This is, of course, where we left our friends. And if we left any loot here, we can go ahead and loot it, or go through the weapons lab again in case we missed any special loot before heading back to biological research. But to continue forward, we need to tag the portal that takes us to the Death Ray Hub. We arrive in a hallway that leads to a narrow room. We can go right or we can go left. Going left 
left for now, we can access a wall-mounted terminal to activate the nearby door. But inside, we just find a deactivated drone. I didn't know what to do with this guy at the time, so I passed him by, but I'll show you what to do with these in just a minute. Peering through a window, however, we see that we've alerted the nearby aliens. Continuing forward, we see that the teleporter that we used to arrive here no longer works. So we can't go back. We can only go forward. Moving south, we see another wall-mounted terminal to the west, which opens another door, which reveals yet another robot drone. Here we can realign the robot sensors and then activate the robot. It does not become a temporary companion, but it does wander off to do some damage. In this room, we can loot a container on the ground and then follow the robot drone south. It continues forward and rounds a corner to attack some aliens. Activating the wall-mounted terminal to the left, we enter this small room to get attacked by a final alien. Here we find two containers on the ground, and between them a table covered in alien biogel and alien epoxy. Heading out, rounding the corner, and into the next room, we see that it exits to the north to a large room with a cowering alien worker. We can use a healing archway here. Before moving forward, we get attacked from the east by a ceiling-mounted turret and an alien. We're attacking from some sort of catwalk that leads downstairs to a lower level. Down here, we see a doorway to the east with a hologram that looks a whole lot like a death ray. That must be where we need to go, but I want to finish exploring this first. Down to the north, we see another door to the east, and heading down here... Oh, we see that it connects to the death ray door we just passed. Heading east into this room, we can loot some alien epoxy on a table and punch a release mechanism to turn off these force fields. Heading through the door, we see the north passage blocked, so instead we'll turn south and round a corner towards a hallway. The path to the north is again blocked, so we'll go south down this hallway to open a door that leads to another sprawling hallway lined with portals out to space. It then turns right, and we see another death ray hologram hovering above this door. Heading down some stairs, we can get the jump on some aliens. <laughs> Turning into the left room, we kill another alien. Here we just find one healing archway and a container on the ground. So heading back out and moving southwest, we go down some stairs, turn northwest down some more stairs, and then open a door to death ray control. On the other side of the door, we head down and turn right. After killing these aliens, we head through the northeastern door to arrive at Death Ray Control. Before we can do anything to the Death Ray, we must first clear this room of hostiles. From here, we can reconfigure the Death Ray. On the panel to the right, we see two buttons. Only one is lit, punching it. points the death ray at Earth. Going back to the console on punching the other one, points the death ray out to space. On the other control, we find two buttons. If we punch the right one, we fire the death ray. Configured here, we see that the beam clearly goes out to space. But if we reconfigure the beam to point at Earth and then punch the button, Oh, we see a devastating detonation visible from space. It looks like it hits close to the Great Lakes. 
One of the descriptive notes of this encounter in the Fallout 3 strategy guide says, you can fiddle with the death ray itself, accidentally, quote unquote, firing it off at the Earth. Maybe it just destroyed Europe. You don't find out. <laughs> so, sorry Europeans. Hope we didn't singe ya. But we don't want to fire on our dear beloved Earth. So instead of doing this, we punch the button on the left console to the far left. This rises one of the four death ray generator cores. We need to destroy this like all the others we've destroyed on the ship by tagging each of the three coolant switches to cause it to overheat. When done, we go back to the left console and again press the generator core eject button. This raises generator core number two and we dispatch it the same way. After the first two explode, we get rushed by aliens. While looting their corpses, we found a container on the ground to the southwest, and now we need to raise the final two death ray generator cores, and then flip their coolant switches to cause them to overheat and explode. With that, the job is done, and we can look out to Earth knowing that we've protected her from this alien threat. To move forward, we head through the southwestern door and activate the teleportation matrix to the living quarters. There are two paths out of this teleporter room, both of which connect to an eastern hallway. Following it around the corner, uh oh, we see one of those big mobile shields that we first saw on the maintenance level. Looks like these aliens have really dug in and are prepared for a siege. Thankfully, it takes just a a few shots from our disintegrator to detonate the shield. After the turrets are gone, we can loot a chest to the southeast before heading up some stairs to the next level. Here we see an alien already dead. Oh, and the aliens and ceiling mounted turrets are attacking more abominations. I'm not sure how the abominations got to this level of the ship. We can take pot shots at the turrets and the aliens that the abominations missed. We have to destroy two of these mobile force field shields in order to continue. Continuing south, we find two rooms to the right, each of which simply has a chest on the ground. At the end, we see a doorway and stairs to the south, but before we head down there, I want to finish exploring this room. On the eastern side of this level, we can destroy two of these shields from behind and then open an eastern door. This leads to a room filled with stasis chambers. This must be either the place where the aliens sleep or where they go to wait out what must be decades or centuries worth of space travel to get from their home planet to their destination. We then go down a stairway in the middle of the room to its lower level. We find a healing archway in one room, and then each of these other rooms just have more alien stasis chambers. We only find one alien epoxy in one of these rooms. When done, we can head back up the stairs and then open either the southeastern or southwestern door. They both lead to a staircase, which bring us down to the same hallway. We can go left or right. Turning left for now, we open a door to an alien sitting room where we fight off some aliens. Continuing down the eastern hallway, we see that it turns north, and we walk right up behind one of those projector shields. They are much easier to kill from back here, but watch out for their explosions. I crippled a limb. Continuing along, we arrive at another hallway. We can go left or right. Turning left, we see an alien corpse on the ground. Did the abominations get all the way back here as well? Continuing to the northern room, we find Toshiro. Toshiro, buddy, we missed you! Why did you leave us like that? 
Well, whatever he said, he sure made quick work of these aliens, my goodness. Despite all their technology, a samurai from the 1500s managed to operate a teleporter on the ship, sneak in behind them, and lay waste to them. We find six dead aliens in this room, seven counting the one in the hallway. But it looks like Toshiro wants to stay here. Maybe that's because his teleportation matrix is no longer functional. If we find a way to activate it later, Maybe we'll see him again. But for now, we've got a job to do. So heading out of Toshiro's room, we can go south down the hallway. We see that it's a dead end down here, so the only way to continue is to go back the way we came. Heading back through that living room, we can pass the stairs we used to get down here to find a support drone. We can realign his sensors and activate him to have him join the coming battle. And sure enough, continuing west-northwest, we find stiff opposition from aliens. Moving forward, we see the aliens have blocked the northern passage with a barrier. We could destroy it or sneak around it by opening a door to the west, but we find this room heavily guarded. And more aliens were hiding in the adjoining room. This is one of the most difficult fights in the game, because we get rushed by six or so aliens and have to fight the ceiling-mounted turrets. the aliens dead, we can sneak back into that room and try and get rid of the turret. Whew, and at last we can take a breather. Immediately to the right, we find a control that gives us captive recorded log number 23. <laughs> Please, just let, let me go! Gosh, what was that machine doing to the poor man's insides? Note that this is the final alien captive recorded log. So if you got them all before this one, you are rewarded with the alien archivist achievement. We can access a terminal to the northwest to remotely overload turret circuitry. That gets rid of a ceiling mounted turret in the next room. Heading inside, we find some alien biogel and crystals scattered all over the ground. Detonating that turret made it harder for us to loot it all. When done, we can head back out to the main room and continue north through a door. This is the room all those aliens were hiding in when we first entered the last one. And here we find a ceiling mounted turret. We can loot a chest on the ground here, some crystals hiding behind a table to the north, and then we head through an eastern door. Here we can access another wall-mounted terminal to remotely overload more turrets. Heading into the hallway, we can activate a nearby idle robot, and we see that we've arrived on the other side of that mobile force field projection. We can go ahead and destroy it from behind. But that means to continue, we need to turn around and go north. We see a healing archway to the left, and when ready, we can go up the stairs, turn left down a hallway, and into a room where we find more abominations. The drone we released earlier was no match for the abominations. We can loot the bodies we find here, and then head up some stairs to the next catwalk level. Here we see a room to the east with windows, and through the door, more abominations. Here we find a small room, but before we can get looting, we hear a noise from behind. Nothing like a sneak critical to make short work of him. Inside, we find crystals and biogel on the ground, and then two shelves, but neither have anything good. On the other side, however, we find some alien epoxy, and then lying on the ground, we find a chest. Well, this is a dead end, so to move forward, we need to head west towards that abomination we just sniped. Heading down the hallway, we see a healing archway in the middle of the room between two doors that lead to a teleporter. The teleportation matrix 
to the bridge. The bridge is our final destination. It is here where we will confront this ship's captain and where the fates of our companions will be written. We'll tackle the bridge and confront the captain in our next episode. I know this is going to be frustrating, but I take Sundays off, which means I'm not going to have the episode for you tomorrow. But never fear, I'll have the next episode ready for you bright and early on Tuesday morning. So be sure to tune in for that. I publish many videos every single week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss the next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a t-shirt shop with custom, unique designs you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a wide array of colors and in a variety of both men's and women's sizes. They also come in a bunch of other gear, mugs, posters, prints, pillows. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early, for Episode 9.